to start by asking you, how do you feel your creative partnership has evolved over the years? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to start? No, you start. Okay. okay. Um, well, we we began just sort of helping each other out with what with what we um, what we kind of wanted to do. We both I come from a painting background, and Joe had been in bands um, like rock and punk bands, and then we kind of we went travelling for a few years. Okay. And um, we were both sort of exploring our own individual like solo projects. And then we just, and then like one day we just sort of said, let's make some pop music. <laughs> so see how it goes. See how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So I started rock writing music, which is what I I I was finding more interesting than painting. I felt like I'd really um, done as much as I could with painting, and it wasn't fulfilling me anymore. Mm -hmm. So I started writing some music, and it was kind of like pop sounding, I suppose. Um, and then Joe, because of his. Uh, as te technological background, yeah. is that how you describe yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> playing all the instruments yourself and making, just making little songs, but doing every part, you kind of learn how to produce stuff. So okay, yeah. So I was getting better at that, and Claire was starting to write songs, and then it kind of just sort of slowly start to fit together. When you guys play live, what sort of motivation and influences um, shape your live performances? Um, I think. I think uh, we like to offer a performance, you know, more than just four guys in jeans, because that's just not what we're about. So we've always liked being influenced by acts that have had a real sort of the the theatrical set. Mm -hmm. Bands like Rammstein. Okay. Yeah, we've got a real, a real amazing set. Bands like, uh, well, artists like Björk, of course, who's always put on amazing shows. But of course, then just straight up, you know, quite punk rock gigs like L7, where it's a real sort of high energy show. So I think all those different things we've tried to want to put into our live performance. So kind of creating something that's that offers something both visual and sonically interesting. And Claire, your voice has often been described as a natural dream pop fit. You're able to create um, a calm and reflective atmosphere with your voice. Do you have any? A set method, or is it is it just natural? Um, I think it's um, it it didn't start as a natural thing. I think it's something I've just I've learnt now. Uh, singing has always come nat naturally to me, but when I started singing, I was very self conscious about my voice and was self conscious about um, the people that maybe I admired and I was worried that I would I would maybe imitate them. But now I think. Um, you know, years down the line, I do now sing like how I sound, okay. and 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 how my personality is, who I am as a human being, really is in my voice now. And so I'm not self-conscious at all like that. It, it really is natural now. Um, Depressor Jolly was a very likable album with songs like Animal Magic, Raptor. Mm. Does the forthcoming album maintain a similar tone? What can you tell us about the forthcoming album? Um, well, Depressor Jolie it was like quite a hysterical album it was like a teenager and um and whereas i think that this album it sounds like uh like someone that's just come into adulthood and it's like a little bit more relaxed but still quite quite um energetic yeah and energe well yeah d definitely but just a little bit more more mature and i think aesthetically and spiritually and all of that they're completely different I said Depression really is quite, you know, angry and angsty mm -hmm. and political and this is a bit more of a romantic album. A bit wider. A bit, wider, a bit wider, yeah. It's a got there's a, a lot more kind of I, th I think, well, we think it has a bit more of a movie soundtrack kind of uh, structure to it. It's okay. a lot more open and um, we have a lot more And what, it goes out it goes up and Yeah, down. it's like a land it's yeah, it's like the it's like landscape. If you could choose two words to sum up what's going on. Landscape, desert. Well, yeah. So, uh, de desert, and that, that's mine. What's yours? <laughs> I would say wide and dreamy. Yeah. Dream. Wide and dreamy. <laughs> wide and dreamy. Yeah, mine's d desert and landscape. So there's what? four. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Video for lungs, which is put out earlier this year. Tell us about the, the lyrics for the song. You, you stay. I crawl into your lungs to see my pain. What do the lyrics signify? Um, it's well. The, the song itself is about 
getting too too close to somebody or something that you actually go inside of them and and by doing that you you expose like your vulnerability uh -huh. so I'd say that's that's what it means does that make sense <laughs> The world is, I really like this song, it's a chilled ambient song, it's got a brilliant feel to it. How did the inclusion of the saxophone come to be for this song? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, do you mind if I answer it? No, right. <laughs> Being polite. Um, it was, a, the, the song, the, the actual s saxophone line was the original vocal melody that I'd written. Mm -hmm. And, um, when, and then when, when we started to build the song around it, I realised that it was kind of a little bit too, the vocal line itself was too much of a big personality for that song and so it was a bit excessive so I was like I'm gonna just forget about that vocal line and write a new one that's more, that, that's more in harmony with the rhythm of the song and the, the, the emotion of the song but then I thought oh, it's a really nice line, it's a really nice vocal lines. So I thought, well, why don't you just play on a different instrument, you know? The, um, so I thought, well, we, we have a, a friend who's a saxophone player, I know he plays really well and he has a lot of expression, so I thought, I bet that would sound really good on saxophone. And, and it's it did. quite breathy it as well. It's quite breathy. So, so it's just like we, we just had it as a solo in the, you know. And he did, a, he did a beautiful job, it's just like this nice section of the song. Blackfire is another great song. I feel this song really compliments you guys as a duo so well, especially the chorus, your voice in the chorus and the guitar work from Joe. Mm. It just works so well. Uh, let's talk about the video for the song, um, <laughs> shot in Victoria Cave. Yeah, yeah, which is just a small cave in the Dales. Let me add the <laughs> geeky point. It's the <laughs> youngest cave in the UK. Really? That's oh, why that it's called Victoria, because it was when Queen, Queen Victoria was in power. So it was the last cave, it's the newest cave in Britain to be given a name. Victoria Cave. Anyway, okay. that's my geeky <laughs> fact. I put a dress on and then um, we had this di a disco ball and a torch and so we just filmed. Your favourite vocalist of all time? Mm, that's hard. You can narrow it down to three or so. Three, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, I would say... I think Elizabeth Fraser is, has got an amazing voice. Um, I really like uh, Björk, and there's a bloke. I say either Neil Young or hmm. you. Your, your turn. <laughs> Let me think of that last it's one. It's so hard to narrow it down to one, isn't it? Neil Young, Michael Stipe, Len Kate Cohen. Bush. Leonard Cohen, even though he barely sings. <laughs> what was the best live concert each of you guys have attended? Ever. Ever, yeah. Ever. Oh, again, it probably Björk 2001 at Hammersmith Apollo. Yeah. Or Ramstein, Manchester, um, <laughs> yeah, Ramstein Manchester Evening good. News. I really enjoyed F Fever Ray as well in Manchester. That, that was a good mm. show. That was 2009 as well, mm. I think. <laughs> <laughs>